This week we see a firmware update from Garmin for the Vector 3 pedals which addresses a number of really interesting side case issues that you may or may not have come across. So the Vector 3s have been out for around two years now. They had a very troubled start to life, especially here in the Llama Lab. My original set have been replaced and since then, well, the return set sat on the shelf for a while because I had another set of power pedals I was using. Since then though, I've done things such as updated the batteries for the single battery, more on that in a moment, and I've been testing them against other power meters and smart trainers. They're now back in the fold of my testing pool. In some more recent testing here in the Llama Lab, I've come across some, well, stranger things. And here's what I'm talking about here. Standard Llama Lab test with the Vector 3s up against another power meter. You can see here in my steady state efforts there, something's going strange there. I had a theory about what that might be. I replicated that at the end of the ride and I could make it occur again. So a quick email over to Garmin about this. They sent back the details of the beta firmware for the Vector 3 pedals, which was 3.68 at the time. It was a public firmware, but you needed to manually install it, which is a bit of a pain, so not everyone had this. The update that's out this week, 3.80, rolls up everything from 3.68 and adds an extra fix as well in the mix. This page over on Garmin.com does list that you need Garmin Express to install this file. You don't, we'll get to that in a moment but it does have the change history listed. Now we need to wrap up both change logs for 368 and 380. So both of those on screen just there, but what you can see is a massive list of fixes around just some edge cases, including the one we just saw before in my Llama lab test. So fix power and cadence spikes of Ant Plus and BLE, prevent pedals from unintentionally being unlinked. That's not a good thing. Both pedals need to be linked to give you both left and right data or else they become Vector 3 S's. Fixed right sensor missing error appearing during a coast. You may have come across this if you're a Garmin user with the Garmin Vector 3s. And there's a number of other power issues and spike issues and things fixed there. And also improved pedal wake up detection. That's a good thing. And improved communication with Garmin Connect Mobile. Whew, that has been troublesome lately with iOS 13, but give it permissions. It should be good to go and even better with that fix installed. Jumping over to the Garmin forums where the true nerds hang out and we can see here a little bit more accurate information of how to get this firmware installed. So the update can be applied using an Edge 520, Edge 520 Plus, 530, 820, 830, 1000, 1030. So pretty much all the newish Garmin's. Having those updates come down via the head unit to the pedals is a pretty neat little trick from Garmin. They realize that you've got a Garmin Vector 3 sensor or sensors paired to the head unit. It will pull down the firmware binary sit it there waiting until it connects next time and say, hey, there's a firmware update. Do you want to install that to your remote peripheral? That's pretty neat. Alternatively, you can use the Mobile Connect app with Garmin Connect. Um, connection issues recently with iOS 13. If you're having any trouble there, just forget the sensor, repair it, re-add it, and you should be good to go. The 3.68 beta I was using resolved all the issues I was encountering, but I also used 3.8 for this outdoor ride the other day. I'm just drilling down into the data here for a hill climb. No drops, everything looks pretty clean. That was with an element roam. No problems at all there. And the left right data looks pretty good. Uh, cadence wise, that is, well it looks like a dog's breakfast, but that's what happens with cadence data. So any of the city state stuff, happy days. That's looking pretty good for me. So there we have it, 3.80 firmware update for the Vector 3 pedals. I would recommend installing that. My experience has been pretty good to date with 3.68, the public beta, before it went to 3.8. 3.8 appears to be just as good, well, as it should be. Now, if you're having any trouble with power spikes, dropouts, just general weirdness with your Vector 3s, and you still wanna hang on to them, I'd highly recommend looking at the alternate battery that I did a video on, links below to that, which is the CR1-3N. By default, the Vector 3 comes with two batteries each side and you can get a bit of knocking and shaking and it can get a bit messy in there with dropouts and things. The CR1 battery, which I'll shorten just to CR1, is one single battery. Less things to go wrong, they're a little bit more expensive, but again, my experience with those, happy days, all good to go. And failing that, make sure you've got the latest end caps on your Vector 3s as well. Garmin support can help you out with those or identifying which ones you have. It should be smooth sailing. Mine have been after that rocky start to life. Happy days, I'll continue to upgrade my firmwares and make sure things are all good. All right, there we are, bit of an FYI today. There's the update, there's what it's all about, there's how to install it. Go ride your bike, enjoy, thanks for watching.